let's be real. Fallout 4's gameplay is, uh, severely outdated. And when I say it's outdated, I mean it was outdated from the moment it was released in 2015. Seriously, when you compare the mechanics to other AAA titles of the time, well, it plays more like a game from 2008. Like, yeah, Fallout 4 may feel smoother and, uh, less clunky, but of course it's gonna feel smoother. It's newer. Besides these surface-level qualities, well, Bethesda didn't really do much to innovate. And in some ways, Fallout 4's gameplay evolved backwards. It's like the good old saying of one step forward, but two steps back. Probably the worst part is the MMO-style health scaling. The bullet sponges can get so egregious that a mere human can eat dozens of headshots from a shotgun at point blank. Yeah, this is not very fun, nor is it very immersive. But of course, I already made a whole video about fixing the balancing, so I don't want to repeat myself too much here. Long story short, I got rid of all the absurd bullet sponges, and now people actually die when being shot in the face. But simply adjusting some numbers doesn't entirely fix the combat. That only covers half the problem. Now we need to flesh out the gameplay and bring it up to modern day standards. I'm talking about giving the player more abilities, more skills, and more tactics they can utilize. Cause for the most part, all you have to do is uh, stand still, eat bullets, and spam the auto aim button to win. You see what I mean? Fallout 4's gameplay is very one-dimensional. You don't have to play smart. And even if you wanted to, well, you really can't, because you don't have the tools to do so. So as a result, the gameplay just ends up looking like B-roll from a brain-dead game journalist. Well, technically, there is a cover mechanic, but it's so jank and useless that most players don't even know it exists. The enemies need an upgrade too. Deathclaws especially are an absolute joke in this game. They used to be as fast and scary as a Baltimore crackhead, but now they're slower than molasses, so they aren't nearly as menacing as they used to be. We also need to bring back the hardcore nature of Fallout. This franchise is supposed to be brutal and unforgiving, but Fallout 4 heavily dumbed down the injury system. Getting injured simply isn't a problem anymore. Of course, I still really love this game despite its faults, and I want to make it better. So for this video, I want to go over where Fallout 4 went wrong with its gameplay, and then fix it with mods. So firstly, the most important thing we need to overhaul is your boring mental hospital look at our wall. Like bro, what is that? It looks like a barren wasteland over there. You see my wall? My wall looks freaking cool. Well, thanks to the sponsor of this video, Displate, I got you covered. You see, with Displate, you can pick all kinds of cool artworks from your favorite games to decorate your wall. And my goodness, look at these things. They're freaking sweet. This one's even got the new texture material, which gives it a unique texture and a cool 3D contour that really makes it pop. Not only are these things extra drippy, but they're super sturdy too. Displates aren't made of flimsy canvas. They're all metal, and that means you can easily mount them on your wall using their magnet mounting system. That means there's no tools required, and no punching holes in your drywall either. Just stick them on there, and you're good to go. It's also pretty easy to adjust, so you can get that perfect symmetry. Or you know, you can easily swap out disc plates if you want to try something new. The best part is that you can get a big discount on disc plates, up to 37% off if you use my link in the description. Seriously guys, these disc plates are pretty cool. You can bet I'm going to be keeping this on my wall for quite a while. Okay, let's start with what is arguably the biggest problem with Fallout's gameplay. This may be controversial, but honestly, I do not like Vats. I think it's terrible. I look at it the same way I look at the autoplay button from Raid Shadow Legends. Having the game play itself just, uh, isn't very engaging. Of course, Fallout started out as an isometric turn-based RPG, so back in the 90s, it made sense. But now that Fallout has transformed into a real-time first-person shooter, well, frankly, I don't see a reason to keep Vats. It's a relic of the past, and it's holding Fallout back. Like, there's not much reason for the developers to implement modern and innovative mechanics if they just expect everyone to use the auto aim button. And look, I get it. Not everyone is a quick scope god. Some players don't like the FPS part of Fallout and just want to play for the role playing part and that's it. That's understandable. But for me, I can't stand it. And I know other players can relate. I want to be the one making all the shots because, you know, it's more fun that way. Using bats though is just really boring. It'll slow the game down to a snail's pace. It's also really clunky and awkward to use. The camera often likes to bug out and sometimes you'll find yourself in a staring competition with your opponent. It can also be really frustrating missing a whole bunch of shots due to random chance, when you could have totally made those shots manually. So really, the best strategy is to use vats to spot an enemy, then close it and take the shot manually. Turns out most players have higher accuracy than an automated targeting system, so that's how we use it. Mostly as a glorified scanner to spot enemies. 
and mines. But every once in a while, you might as well use a saved up critical on a tough enemy. That's about it though. Besides those two specific scenarios, most players just don't engage with VATs. Obviously, that's a pretty big problem when over half your player base isn't using a major mechanic. Choosing to ignore VATs also means missing out on a huge chunk of the perk tree. So I think it's about time we move on to something better. Something that every single player will actually want to use. I don't mean we should delete VATs entirely. No, of course not. Action points, critical hits, and all the VATS related perks play a major role in Fallout's gameplay after all. So that's why I've opted to replace VATS with VAFs. Basically, it's a bullet time feature. And if you don't know what that means, well, you can think of it like the Deadeye mechanic from Red Dead or the Sand Devastan from Cyberpunk. When activating VAFs, time will slow down, but it doesn't lock onto enemies. So that means you can't use it as a crutch to scan for enemies or mines anymore. All the aiming and target acquisition is up to you. That's really the main difference. It's a manual version of VATS. It still costs action points to use, so you can't abuse it forever. Well, not unless you max out your build, that is. The VAF system integrates perfectly with all the VATS related perks, so you can take advantage of perks like Mysterious Stranger, Four Leaf Clover, Grim Reaper Sprint, and so on. More agility and action points means you can use VAFs for longer. More perception means the slow time effect will be stronger. And more luck means critical hits will build up faster. Critical hits can be stored and activated on command. But since everything is manually aimed, you can miss critical shots if you're sloppy. You gotta make sure to use them wisely and precisely. That's what I really love about this system. It retains all the RPG elements while also integrating player skill and input, all in a seamless and engaging fashion. I used to completely ignore VATS because it was boring and it took me out of the gameplay, but with VAFs, it reels me in even more. Now I consistently find myself using it. It's just way too fun. It makes me feel like a badass gunslinger or like a chromed up cyborg. So now that we can't rely on VATS anymore, we're gonna need to get good at clicking on heads. Because if you can't aim, then you're cooked. But uh, well, the aiming in Fallout 4 really sucks. It feels super sluggish and inconsistent. That's because this game still uses mouse acceleration. Like, come on, this alone is proof that Bethesda is stuck in the early 2000s. And for some reason, the vertical sensitivity is half the horizontal. To make it even worse, the sensitivity is drastically reduced while sprinting, which makes everything feel unresponsive. You can't customize your aiming sensitivity either. You're stuck with a linear slider. So, all of that combined makes the aiming feel really unnatural. It's like you're constantly finding the mouse on where you want to go. But thankfully, with a mod called Raw Input, we can completely fix all that nonsense. Now, the way you move your mouse and the way you aim in-game is directly correlated, thus making it feel more natural and intuitive. You can also tweak the aiming sensitivity to your liking, which allows you to make perfectly precise and deliberate shots. This mod especially is an absolute game changer. Now finally, I can quick scope these noobs with extreme precision. Okay, now we need to address the biggest travesty. Slow enemies. Deathclaws and Super Mutants especially got nerfed pretty hard. In previous games, they were stupid fast and super scary, but now they're comically slow, so they aren't much of a threat. They're so slow that all you have to do is backpedal and you'll get away scot-free. So to fix all of that, I updated my personal mod, Hardcore Health Overhaul, to make them faster. Let's start with Deathclaws. These mutated monsters are supposed to be the apex predator of the wasteland, capable of catching any prey. So to reflect that, I increased their animation speed by 25%. That means they run faster and attack much quicker. So now they can track you down and slice you into little pieces in an instant. Now that is very lore accurate. Also, I should note that simply increasing the animation speed may cause some issues. Sometimes they like to slide around really goofily, and it'll also cause their grab animation to be out of sync. I'm not really sure how to fix this, but this is a Bethesda game after all, so I'm considering these bugs to be a feature. Anyway, I did the same thing with the Yanguise too. They got a 20% speed buff, so no matter what, you will never be able to outrun them in a straight line. The biggest buff goes to the Super Mutants. They got a 50% increase, because holy moly, they were hilariously slow in the base game. But now, they are much quicker. Their jogging speed is the same as your sprint speed, so you can't outrun them. As soon as you run out of action points, they'll easily catch up to you and stun lock you with a flurry of melee attacks. These guys are pure muscle, so they should be able to swing around a big sledgehammer like it's a pool noodle. It's best to never let them get close in the first place, especially for the muty super sliders. These guys are super dangerous now. Every time I see one, I can feel my heart drop down to my stomach. 
To make melee enemies even more ruthless, we can install the Grab Attack series. Now, if a melee enemy gets too close, they may trigger an attack that locks you in place for guaranteed damage. I will admit, it is kind of unfair for the player since the animation locks you in place, but it sure does make melee enemies a lot more menacing. The one for Deathclaws especially is pretty dang funny, because they'll throw you around like a ragdoll. They may even launch you into outer space like a giant from Skyrim. Seems pretty fitting to me. So with all these changes, melee monsters and mutants are a much bigger threat. You actually have to take them seriously. Another big feature that Fallout 4 dumbed down heavily is the injury system. Crippled limbs really aren't an issue. All the player's injuries heal automatically after 60 seconds, so using a stim pack is completely unnecessary, and trying to cripple an NPC is nearly impossible. They'll most likely die before getting injured. The same goes for the player. Very rarely will you ever get injured. It takes so many shots that it only happens once in a blue moon. So all of that makes the injury system completely irrelevant. At this point, you might as well just remove it from the game. But of course, I would never actually do that. I want to make the injury system actually mean something. So, to bring back that hardcore element to Fallout, I made an update to my personal mod, Hardcore Health Overhaul, which will change how the injury system works. At first, I just set it to where limb shots did 30% less damage than torso shots, while headshots did up to five times more damage. But after many hours of gameplay, I noticed that people weren't getting injured very often. That's because the overall health percentage of each limb was way too high. You would have to deal a boatload of damage to a single limb just to cripple it. So this time around, I made sure to lower the overall health of each limb. Now it only takes one or two shots to cripple a leg. Not only is this very immersive, but it also makes the gameplay a lot more engaging. Now shooting limbs is a very viable strategy. It's especially useful on big enemies like Deathclaws. Since Deathclaws are so fast now, you'll want to slow them down to keep them from slicing you up. It will take quite a few shots to break their limbs with puny firearms, but something like a rocket launcher should be able to disable them in one shot. It's probably the best strategy to take down a Deathclaw. Since their headshot multiplier isn't very high, you may not be able to kill them in time before they get to you. It can be very beneficial to injure them first, then finish them off with a deadly critical. The same goes for behemoths, especially since they like to shield their face with their arm. Meanwhile, their legs are totally exposed, so if you take down the giant's legs first, then that means you can finish them with an easy headshot. As for the player, you'll definitely be getting injured more often, so you better make sure to have some stim packs on hand, because I disabled automatic healing. If you get stuck in the middle of nowhere with a broken leg and no stim packs, then you better be ready to limp back to civilization. Ah, uh, yes. Now this is true Fallout gameplay. Ideally, I'd like to overhaul the healing system too. You know, to make it a little bit more complex than just a uh, stim pack, stim pack, stim pack. But that's something I'll save for later. For now, I just wanted to focus on the combat side of things. So now the enemies are faster, we need a way to counter them. But unfortunately, Fallout 4 doesn't have any way of doing so. If a melee enemy rushes you, the best thing you can do is sprint in the opposite direction. And for the most part, it does work pretty good. But if they catch up to you and get you pinned down, then you're screwed. There's no counterplay besides click hard and hope you kill them first. Gee, it sure would be nice if I had the ability to move sideways. Well, first person dodge does exactly that. It grants you the ability to dodge. Dodging will not only move you out of the way, but also give you a very brief moment of invincibility frames. You know, to make sure the dodging is actually useful. Of course, it does cost action points to do, and the timing can be pretty strict. So, that means it actually requires skill, and you just can't spam it forever. But yes, you can totally phase through a behemoth slam if you time your dodges just right. But if you mistime your dodge, well, then you'll get squashed and die. So basically, this mod turns Fallout into Dark Souls. For the little cherry on top, this mod also gives you the ability to slide. So if you're in trouble and need to rush to cover, you can slide to get there faster and put yourself in position. Or if you want, you can use it to break the ankles of your enemies like a sweaty COD player. Really, the only thing missing here is the ability to dodge in third person. For that, we'll need another mod called Simple Dodges. Now this is quite literally the Dark Souls of Fallout mods. What's pretty cool about this one is that it'll give you a slow time effect on a perfectly timed dodge, which allows you to retaliate with a well-placed shot. The dodges themselves are pretty dang far, 
So, honestly, it's kind of unbalanced, but it sure is fun. Ideally, I'd like to make it where your dodging ability scales with the agility stat. That would play perfectly into the role-playing aspect. But as is, you have to adjust everything manually through the settings. But either way, the ability to dodge is a must-have. It allows you to play up close and aggressive without feeling the need to run away and cower in fear. It does take some skill, but if you can master the art of dodging, you'll be greatly rewarded. When it comes to countering guns, well, we can't really dodge bullets very effectively, so instead, we need the ability to take cover properly. Especially since the time to kill is much lower now, you absolutely want to avoid taking damage as much as possible. Well, Fallout 4 does, uh, somewhat address this issue. Technically, there is a cover mechanic. If you stand close to a wall, then aim, your character will automatically jump out from cover. Then when you stop aiming, they'll go back to their previous position. It's a pretty good idea. However, the execution is terrible. This mechanic just feels jank and sloppy. You don't have full control of your character. Sometimes you'll pop out of cover when you don't mean to, and other times it just doesn't work. Even when it does work, it's not that great, because most of your body is still exposed. So for something a little bit more useful and intuitive, we got a mod called Uneducated Shooter. I'm not sure why it's called that when the goal is to make you into an educated shooter, but uh, anyway, this mod will introduce a manual leaning system, much like Rainbow Six and Tarkov. You can manually lean left or right, anywhere and anytime you want. Leaning this way means you'll minimize your exposure as much as possible. You can hide your entire body behind a corner, with only your head and arms poking out, so you can get some really nasty pixel peaks. If you utilize this technique just right, you can clear rooms flawlessly like an expert SWAT operator. I pretty much never use the vanilla cover system, and uh, well, neither did the vast majority of the community, but with a cover system like this, it's way more convenient and effective, so there's a lot more incentive to use it. So there you go, that's how I've mostly fixed Fallout 4's core gameplay. Of course, I'm still not entirely done with this project. We still need to go over AI and stealth, gunplay mechanics, power armor, and healing, but for a task as big as overhauling the entirety of Fallout 4, I think it's best to take it a few steps at a time. If you guys would like to try these mods for yourself, then you can look in the description for the links to everything. And before you do so, please make sure that you're playing on the uh, last gen version of Fallout 4. Sadly, the next gen update broke a lot of mods, and in general, it's a broken update. So, you'll definitely want to downgrade to play a modded game. If you're on console, then well, I don't know what to tell you. I don't play on console, and chances are most of these mods won't be available. As always, I'm curious to see what you guys have to say. Let me know what you guys think about my approach to overhauling Fallout's combat. If you got any cool ideas, suggestions, or mod recommendations, feel free to leave all of that in the comments down below, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Before we go, I have to give a big thanks to Displate. Not only have they made my wall even cooler, but their support is what allows me to make these awesome videos. And remember, you can use my link down below to get a big discount on your first order of Displates.